Hi everybody, this is Paul from Ortho Eval Pal, and with me today I have Sam. Sam is 64 years old. Very interesting presentation here. About 10 weeks ago, um, developed a little rash over his uh, arm and, and neck and shoulder area, and um, s with a severe amount of discomfort. And then soon after that, lost all the motion basically in his shoulder, uh, and has not been able to work. He's a mason and needs both of his arms, and right now cannot really use this side. So what I want to do is just bring an awareness out there that because you can't lift your arm doesn't always mean that you have a completely torn rotator cuff. Um, he was sent for an MRI of his cervical spine and x-rays of his cervical spine and because it was a suspicious a suspicion that there was nerve root compression. There was not. Um, and so what they found was that he had shingles that affected his C5 nerve root. And uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask him to demonstrate his motion, okay? So we're going to have you, Sam, start by trying to lift both arms up as high as you can, okay? And he's actively trying to flex this arm right now, okay? Now, you know, you can, okay, now you're going to put it down, and I'm going to have you lift your arms up to the side this way as far as you can. And good. That's as high as that will go. Now I want you to rest. We're going to check his external rotation, so try to hold that arm right there, and you'll notice he can't hold the elbow into flexion. He can just a little bit, but he barely has any, okay, so his biceps are not functioning well, and now I'd like you to hold that hand right there. Don't let me turn your palm down, okay, and I can easily break him there, okay, so that is C5 for supination, C5 on the biceps, the deltoids are C5 also. So we're really suspicious that he has a C5 that's affected. Um, I just pulled his shirt up and he has residual uh, from the rash over here. Um, he is going to be undergoing a nerve conduction velocity and EMG study real soon. You can't really do that Thursday. early on in the process this Thursday. You can't do it really early in the process because the test won't uh, come out uh, as well as it would after you give it a little bit of time. So hopefully um, what will happen is he'll have um, subsequent EMGs that show some increase in nerve conduction so that he can start to develop his um, you know his deltoid and, and start to activate his cuff a little bit better and uh, you'll notice here that he has good internal rotation hold it up against your belly strong there good I'm gonna try to push your arm up resist me triceps are excellent um, we checked his reflexes. He's not demonstrating good reflexes at all on this side, but he has good reflexes on the right side. He has some loss of sensation and most of his discomfort is up around the yep. proximal deltoid region. He's in therapy now because we want to prevent an adhesive capsulitis. So you'll notice right here that he has some tightness right there. So he's doing some pulleys and he's doing some PT. Trying to make sure that he doesn't get too stiff and tight in this whole inevitable healing process which could take you know a year to two years um, so um, that is that's a tricky one you know you can have a fractured greater tubercle that looks like this you can have a torn rotator cuff a massive cuff tear you could have a large C5 nerve root compression um, that all looks like this so I have other videos in my uh, YouTube playlist and if you go to that, you'll see uh, one that says six different reasons why people lose external rotation. That's another one that would mimic this scenario a little bit. And um, check that out. Let me know what you think. And uh, thanks for listening.